first workshop, uh, Martin Pavlacek, uh, a quality engineer in OpenStreetMap and Red Hat, who is interested in you see, those guys don't read the right side of the door, okay? <laughs> Martin Pavlasek, and today I'm like to show you uh, pretty cool stuff what you can do uh, in terminal with help Python if you maybe don't know. Let's jump into the mm, real life task. Imagine some video on YouTube and you decide to download it. So mm, you have several ways how you could do that. There exists some uh, web services that can uh, do this for you or you can install an add-on uh, to your browser but it's still not so cool way how you can do that another task uh, imagine some JSON like this and you want to read the structure mm, yeah it's completely fine for, for scripts machines and this stuff but it's not so comfortable for real humans. So, how can Python can help us in such situations? Uh, there exists a package which is called PyTube uh, that you can use in your scripts. Or if I would go back to the JSON example, uh, there exists a module which is called json.tool uh, which actually works as a stream filter and uh, whatever puts in it, for it formats and prints it uh, pretty nicely. So what we are going to do today? Uh, this session is considered as a workshop. Uh, so I'm going to show you a lot of demos uh, that I've prepared for you, uh, but also you can try um, all this stuff on your own. I will show you uh, that it's um, in the next slide. Uh, in order to use these tools, I mean install them, uh, I will do short introduction about pip, pypy and what's virtual env if you maybe didn't know. Uh, I have a question for you. Please uh, raise your hands who knows Python. I mean, uh, knows how to write Hello World. Ooh, that's better than I expected. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but for others, I have good news. You don't have to know the language to be able to use uh, these tools. So, no worries. Uh, that's why this uh, session wouldn't be about the Python as a language, so uh, I am go I'm not going to tell you anything about decorators, um, generators, and other Python specific stuff. So uh, you can try it on your own. Uh, if you visit, <laughs> this GitHub location, you will find that all materials uh, for this session. Uh, when you uh, finish uh, the cloning, there is a script uh, which creates virtual env for you and you can invoke it uh, by this command. Uh, in case you will have some problems with that, uh, there are several, well, at least a few, uh, USB stick drives. 
that you can use if, if you will have some problems. Did somebody need to be secret with those files if you can't download it from GitHub? No? We'll see. Uh, is there any marker? Python installation, it has to be downloaded or installed into the system package manager. If you are using Fedora, CentOS, or RHEL, uh, just type DNF install Python virtual env. Um, to enter the virtual env, uh, just source uh, file which is in bin folder and activate. So, it seems that we are ready to play something. So, welcome to my sandbox. Uh, I have prepared demos of um, several categories. Uh, the first of them would be about manipulation with files. You probably know zip archives, right? But you maybe didn't know that there exists a Python module uh, which you can use uh, for creating uh, archives, listing files in there. Uh, mm -hmm. and, as, and, and also, um, which, because it's uh, just Python library, uh, you can use the same functions in your scripts. So let's just shortly take a look on it. Uh, I have some examples here. So, um, um, some modules can be invoked by Python dash M, which will, let's say, execute uh, the module itself, as is as it works in this example. So, uh, dash, uh, Python dash M zip file, and I do not, um, I don't remember all parameters. So let's list it. Yeah. So what's in there? Mm, yeah. Uh, but we can also do that the same um, by Python. So let's open IPython, which is interactive, more interactive um, like version of Python. Import the module. Open ar an archive and see what's in there. We can also get some more information about just one of the files. That would be python.png. For example, get size after compression. or before. Another one, uh, which is a module which is called file CMP, which stands for uh, file compares. It actually works uh, as well for 
um, comparing directories. So let's try that. And you can see that there is one file which is called uh, dog.ng, which is uh, contained in the both directories. Okay, uh, uh, we can do the same in the Python itself. So let's import the module, do the div. And let's take a look what's just in the B directory. This is the content. And this is common. Diff report, we just saw it um, in previous from the command line. Look for some text and image filters or tools. As I show you uh, on the just beginning, um, there exists a tool with, or package, uh, which is built in, uh, which is json.tool. Uh, you can use it as a um, filter. I mean, it works for standard input and standard output, but also you can pass uh, files um, that should work. Uh, I have another question. Um, who of you uh, knows where is or um, there exists uh, some um, algorithm which is called ROT13? Uh, do you have any idea where this can be used, or or some application or some place where you where you notice this? Uh, for example, there exists one kind of outdoor game uh, about finding stuff outside. Uh, okay, it's geocaching. Uh, because when you visit some um, page of the cache, uh, there is a clue that should help you uh, to find the actual location of the box. And this clue is um, encoded into this um, this algorithm. What's nice? It's symmetric. So hi all would be translated into UVNYY, but we can use it twice and we will get the same input. Markdown. Um, you probably noticed that a lot of GitHub repos uh, are using um, read, readme files which looks pretty nice, uh, but actually the others um, of the repo uh, actually don't write HTML into that files. Um, in the most cases, uh, it's written in Markdown language. Uh, and Python provides a package uh, which converts this uh, Markdown syntax into HTML.
So the input, for example, can look like this. There are uh, headlines, lists, and we can turn it into the HTML, which will look like this. So this is the output. But also there exists a package uh, which you can use for inversion con um, conversation uh, that puts that tries to parse HTML file and put it into the markdown back. The name is markdown if it leftovers um, yeah. uh, and actually despite uh, this package uh, doesn't provide um, command line API so it, it's necessary to use the Python um, in this example I just open the output, which is example.html, uh, read all lines, and by markdown if a um, call, uh, just turn it into the markdown back. So this is the input. And this is the output in the markdown. Uh, it doesn't look exactly the same, but um, it's pretty similar. Uh, what's nice? <laughs> Actually, we can test it. I mean, we can use Python again and use a markdown command, which should turn this back uh, into HTML. So let's see the differences. Ah. Uh, it doesn't look exactly the same, but I think it's still pretty useful. Uh, there is only differences um, bef uh, in rendering um, lists. One liner. This is my favorite. Uh, you probably know um, a command which is called NL, number lines. But, but it's not so flexible as you sometimes you need. Uh, one, line, one liner module uh, allows you to put any expression that you want to apply to the each line of the input. So this is ordinary example of or ordinary output of NL and let's try to mimic the same output. Um, there is an R uh, variable. It stands for the number of the line and the underscore, uh, which, which is actually the line of the input. Let's take a look on other example. Because it's, yeah, uh, also sometimes you need or you want uh, to print the file name of the input. Uh, that's why there exists uh, fn uh, variable which contains this name.
And because it's ordinary Python expression, you can, for example, use the upper method and prints everything in uppercase. But we can still may go for the further. Uh, the one-liner module also uh, contains ability or have ability to import other modules. Uh, in this example, uh, I will use um, regular expression substitution. So I will <coughs> import the module and turns uh, every number into the number as a verb. So now you can see that port number and all constants are substituted. <coughs> Pigments. Uh, you probably <coughs> um, want sometimes uh, colorize uh, some source code. Um, this utility is pretty handy for such situations. tool because uh, it will adjust uh, the output to the formatting. Oh. What can one wrong will wrong? Let's skip it. Um, so if I specify output as PNG, it will create the picture. Um, there is, you can also, ah, yeah. The output can be also order HTML page. Or you can use different um, color theme and also add um, numbering of lines. which looks like this. But there is also an option that you can... Ah. Unfortunately, I can't show you this example, uh, but there is one feature uh, that uh, will display uh, non-visible characters by uh, dots and other characters. So that was Pygmans. IMGDiff is pretty handy if you have two pretty similar pictures, but uh, it's not so obvious what's, why they are different, or if there, if is there any difference. So if I show you the, the first, And the second, you probably didn't notice anything. But if I IMG div, it displays pretty nicely where are differences. Uh, also, you can specify background color, so it can looks a little bit better. Yeah. 
Uh, also, you can use file as an output. And have it as a as an ordinary folder um, file. Let's take a look for something interesting for the Python as a language. You probably know uh, PDB, Python Debugger, uh, which is integrated in. It's which is built in, but you maybe didn't know that there exists a pretty nice command line or text-based uh, debugger, which is called. By UDB. I have some example here. Um, this is just pretty uh, easy example. Uh, and on this line, I put a breakpoint. Um, you can use cursor, um, cursor arrows or Vim movements uh, to look around. Um, if you press N, it will do one step or one, yeah. It will uh, jump into the next line. If, I, if I'd like to go inside, press S, like a step, and you can go forward further. On the right side, uh, there is variable list. And what's pretty nice, uh, you can also uh, see the structure of each uh, variable. Okay, so go next. Ah. Something is wrong because exception was raised. So let's hit E. And it seems that I passed something wrong um, into this method. Uh, I don't want to continue because I need to edit the code. So I will press Q as a quit, which immediately exits uh, the debugger. So let's fix it. Uh, also, there is a nice feature, uh, which is pretty common in, de in debuggers, but this one also uh, is able to do the same, which is run into the cursor. So move the cur your cursor whenever you want, press T, and the execution would be stopped at this place. Also, uh, when the method um, <coughs> returns something, you will see it on the right side. Uh, this exception is generated on std out uh, just about um, the Python debugger. If I remove the breakpoint, um, it wouldn't be there. So that was another debugger that you can be that you can use. Notebook is pretty um, pretty nice tool. Actually this web server. It provides a lot of features. One of that I like the most is terminal. Oh, this doesn't look well. Yeah. So I'm in the browser. Oh, come on. But I still do everything 
as in ordinary terminal. That's one, one thing. Uh, another is the Python notebook. Um, this web environment uh, lets you interactively execute uh, some parts of your code. Um, and also you can run off deals these, these, these cells at once. So if you hit shift enter, it will execute uh, the, um, this, this place. And it's, you can see that it really works for the each um, each execution. You can also put several lines of the code into the cell and run it once. But you can also, uh, it also contains auto-completion, which is pretty neat. Oh. Uh, it also have, you can also um, edit any other folder, any other file. It has support for a lot of other languages. such things. So that was Python notebook. And what if you need to create some data, for example, for testing purposes? Uh, in the case of CSV, you can use a random data uh, module, which provides data gen um, functionality. According to spec file, uh, it will generate defined amount of lines of this of this file. Yes. The spec file can looks like this. Um, you can for the integer columns, uh, you can use ranges, minimum on, on maximum. You can also specify a date. Um, also, the delta between generated items uh, and it's also possible to pass your own uh, formatic string here. Or for some um, other cases, you <coughs> can use uh, one of these choices, which would be randomly picked up. What's pretty nice, you can also pass a regular expression, and this tool will uh, use it for creating some random names. So let's take a look at it. Look at it. Uh, this parameter dash L uh, stands for I want to create just 10 lines. It creates new file and this is the output. You can see that, for example, these pseudonames uh, are generated according to regex because not all not all of them are has the same length. I can run it several times, and also the output changes. Uh, 
or you can fake others. I mean, create some uh, random names, but this is much more clever tool uh, because fake factory also considers your national environment, which can be sometimes pretty handy. First of all, I will show you the Python version. Um, usage is pretty obvious. Whenever you uh, invoke name, it will um, pass. It will you will get the new name or the new string. Uh, at this computer, I have. Uh, US nation, uh, US environment, so also the names and the rest looks like that. But what if I want to generate three check addresses? Uh, you can just pass the language or nationality specification and it works pretty nice. <laughs> and what if I'd like to generate 10 check names? Did you find your, uh, yourself there? <laughs> <laughs> because yesterday uh, it <laughs> generates a name of one, one, one friend. I mean, his name and surname as well. <laughs> uh, but what's pretty nice, you can also try to, for example, use Bulgarian uh, environment, I mean. I'm not completely able to read this. <laughs> no way. You can see uh, which uh, nationalities you can use. So it's really nice. Uh, at this point, uh, I would like to do a short break. Uh, you can take a coffee or just walk around and we can be back in, let's say, 10 minutes. Yes, 10 minutes. Please grab a coffee, leave the bag for the phone. You can get some reverb if you will write a nice uh, post about the seven. Okay, please be in time. 10 minutes. Jo, to, to je právě něco, co jsem nepravděl. Jo, jo, jo. 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 Yeah. 
we can we can also put it on the front of the because you know everybody needs it, so then they have to uh, it looks like push roll or okay. Okay. Zrovna to jsem si zapojil vytisknout. Thank you. 
I don't know. I don't know how it's done. It works. Yes, it yeah, works. Yeah, it so was what's fine. about? Yeah, you wanted to see it, Mister? Uh, yeah, it's forty. Yes. So uh, but I am over half of the presentation. So we will, uh, soon f we will finish sooner. Yeah, and I also think that a lot of people is not, will not be back? Is, is not back. Ah, uh, now, yeah. Um, so I don't. I will scream in the in the hall, okay? <laughs> Are we we can we can uh, <laughs>
listens to the speaker, you can get some cool reward from Red Hat. Okay. Thanks for coming back. And let's continue on the other part, which would be about presentation. Um, you can use OpenOffice Impress or another tool, but also there exists a package uh, which will, will let you um, create presentation as interactive HTML page. The name is Python PyDown. Uh, be aware, there also exists package which is just called PyDown, but it do different stuff. So uh, don't do the mistake as I did. <laughs> Straight. So let's take a look how it works. <clears throat> the usage is pretty obvious. This is example how the slides can look like. Uh, it's ordinary markdown syntax, but there is exclamation mark slide, which is divider about content of each slide. So we can run it, and it will generate HTML folder. with index HTML inside in inside in, in it. Yeah. And this is the output. Uh, you can use your arrow keys about to navigate between the slides. It also supports co uh, pretty nice code highlighting in different languages. Uh, it, I think it also uses pigments that I showed you in some previous example. It also contains some pretty nice animations if you want. And that's it. Another way how you can do um, the presentation from Markdown is called ODP Down, which turns um, your Markdown file into open open document format. Actually, I use this tool for creating this presentation because it's much more easier, at least for me, to maintain the content in GitHub or in Git uh, in plain text form instead of uh, ODP binary. So how it works? Oh, oh. Let's have some slides, uh, such like this. Uh, it's, for this tool, uh, there is no slide divider as you, as I show you in yes, in previous example. Uh, but it sl um, splits slides according to headlines. So this is, let's uh, say, it's chapter and uh, with in the second level uh, headline uh, would be the content. I also have some template for this purpose. Uh, let's have some first slide, second, and something for the end. But I would like to insert uh, my 
markdown slides somewhere in between. So how it can be done? Um, ODP down understands several parameters. Uh, the most important are content master. Uh, the template contains several master pages, uh, which would be used for first headlines and the second um, level headlines. So the main one, I call it chapter, because it's name in the template, in the, inside the template, and the content. Actually, I, I can show it again. View master slides. This will be the content chapter, content uh, last uh, slide, and this would be chapter. Uh, but I don't want to insert everything to the end of the template. I want to put it uh, in, this, in the third position <coughs> of the whole presentation. So that's why I am passing dash p and the number where these uh, markdown uh, slides would be inserted. So let's run it. And let's take a look how this, uh, will it look like. So we have first slide from the template, second slide from the template, and this is a content from the markdown file. This one as well. And the last one was also contained in the template. So you can combine um, some handcrafted slides with the others uh, which you can maintain in the markdown file. Another pretty, I love this tool. It's called Play It Again Some. There exist several other um, variations of this tool. Um, I think one of them is Do It Live, by it, by, but this one I found a little bit more handy. Actually, it does a recording of your thermal session and you can record it um, everywhere you want again. Uh, the command that the package will install into your system is ps um, and for example record something. It seems that it does nothing, but actually it's not true. It drops me into the subshell and from this point, every keystroke is recorded and the output as well. So I can print the date or something with a lot of typos. Oh, no. Just the high. Uh, to stop the recording, just leave the terminal. I mean, just type exit. And let's, let's play it again. And now the funny thing will happen. Uh, I can press any key on my keyboard, for example, just spacebar all the time, but actually it will show you just the recorded characters. 
So I hit enter. And actually this, oh. oh, I screwed it up. Oh. And continue typing. You can see it also uh, <laughs> record my typos, I mean backspace, backspaces. And I'm still clicking on the same um, button in, in my keyboard all the time and just wait for the enter. There is also a pretty nice feature uh, which is called Autotype and Auto Waypoint. Autotype is uh, actually timeout between each keystroke, and Auto Waypoint is uh, timeout uh, or just wait for hit enter. Just a quick question. Sure. Uh, it catch the output and spread it, or actually? It depends on what you want, because there exists also a uh, live something parameter, which is not... You can... you don't know about it um, from the help, uh, but yeah, I can show you the example of what... It also captures the output, uh, but uh, with the parameter it will execute the command by the time you are replaying uh, the session. So, if I decide to just use 15 milliseconds per each stroke and 700 uh, for each enter, enter, looks like a video. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you are writing <laughs> Yeah, actually you got me. Yeah, uh, I'm using this tool in several examples, but not all the time. Just in the, some, a little bit difficult because it's so easy to do a lot of typos here. So I want to do you to enjoy this session and not enjoy my typos. <laughs> But yeah, uh, back to your question. For example, uh, let's see the day here. And uh, do the same. So, yes. Record session date. Exit. If I would record it, uh, play. <coughs> the date is in past. Actually, I don't remember the name of the parameter, but I know that there exists. <coughs> uh, ah, live replay. So, date. As you can see, the date, the output is the same. So can so yes, uh, you can use recorded output, and you can also use it for uh, the live output, which is not, which it depends on your own. Uh, yeah, I almost forgotten. Uh, there also exists uh, HTML player for this. It's 
done by the same author. This is example from uh, the, from the author. It's not done by done, done by me. It's still Firefox, and works works the same. Let's move to some interesting system utilities. All of you are using clipboard. Uh, but there is not pretty so much handy uh, tools for manipulating with the content. Uh, I really like <coughs> a module which is called copy and paste. Just uh, so just just pip install copy paste and use it. I'm for example going to copy this section. paste, just put it in, in the output and I can also use standard input uh, as the content um, of the clipboard. <coughs> so, sometimes it's pretty handy. By iNotify, uh, it's can be useful when you design some application which for example uh, have to watch some directory if there are as if is there are some changes uh, for example the user change the config file or some new file will appear that So I can, what, if I create some new file, the event would be raised. And in your Python scripts, uh, you can create a handler that will do something on this event. Uh, something for internet. A uh, simple HTTP server is pretty simple tool in case you have some folder and you want to share it, uh, for example, on your local network uh, to your friend. Usage is pretty obvious, just call this um, Call the module. By default, it works on port 8000. And this is the content. Um, if I, for example, Create a new folder, just refresh the, the page, and the content will appear. Definitely. Sure. So, right now, if I know your IP, I can download the file if I'm from the same Wi Fi? Uh, it depends on your firewall configuration. Uh, by default, I, f I think it wouldn't be possible, at least. On this machine, mm -hmm. but yeah, if the to... if the port if the port would be open, uh, it's shared to anybody on the okay. same network. Don't uh, This is a contest for you. Do any of you have any idea um, where or for which purpose you can use Telnet by these days? 
you know that it's pretty open old. Ports. Pardon check me? Open ports. You check open ports on the, uh, on the client on a different uh, machine. Or to, to debug, uh, debug uh, SMTP, for example. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, there is also just, uh, also, um, <laughs> let's say it's a toy, uh, which is more for, for fun than for real work. Say it aloud. No, no, just, uh, it was a long time ago that it's Star Wars. So. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's ASCII art uh, version of, uh, of this movie. Yeah. I'm not going to play the whole movie here. It takes more than half an hour at least. But yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> There was a new episode on the cinema by last, I don't know, month or two. Uh, another thing that I already mentioned in just the whole beginning uh, is PyTube, which is utility that you can use for downloading uh, videos from the internet. some action. <laughs> <laughs> Let's postpone it to afterwards because it's <laughs> it will take some time. Uh, um, you can use the, the tool and with just the oh, just passing the URL of the of, of some video, hit enter. Uh -huh. And you don't have to worry about uh, resolution or format. Status server is more like a tool what you can, uh, when, where you can use uh, when you need to debug something. Uh, for example, you have to, you are looking for uh, some um, response, uh, 400. I mean, HTTP status. I do apologize, this will not work at this moment. But you can try it on your own. Uh, Seagull is pretty handy tool if you have some bunch of photos and want to share it to others as the HTML gallery. Seagull init, which 
creates some default configuration. Uh, the important line is here, source, which is the name of folder uh, for the pictures, I mean the content. Seagull build will create all static HTML files and also, there is also built-in web server for presentation. It also contains full screen mode. I just press F like a full screen. Uh, what's also nice uh, that it uh, takes care load exposition if it's available. Um, I have some a few things for your terminal. PyChalk. Uh, will let you in your Python scripts uh, create colorful output. So the output can look like this. And the usage is pretty easy. You can also specify some formatting options as a sickness or um, underscoring. RAD, uh, it can be called as a console highlighter. Uh, it also contains interactive mode for creating new rules, for example, highlighting hex numbers which will match um, this pattern. We can list it. Uh, I already have prepared a rule which is name lock for this purpose. Um, So it works this way. Uh, or, or you can also use it for um, highlighting your logs. This is some sample input. And it also can look like this because of these rules. The last package that I'd like to show you is Conway CPU, which is actually implementation of Game of Life that you maybe know. Actually, I will consider this uh, like a screensaver. Yeah, I will need another terminal for this. It looks like a mess, but if I do some load on the processor, uh, it starts changing a lot, because according to load, uh, the new seeds will appear there. It's also, dis it can be distinguished uh, by different color. If I kill it, it starts to slow down. Would that show some text or just some random pixels? Uh, no, it's not random. There is algorithm why some pixels are appear and disappear. It's not so, it, it looks like a random chaos, but actually it isn't. During work on this topic, wasn't hurt even killed any zoologist or snake. I promise. <laughs> so, remember, uh, 
this Python will not bite you. Python can be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Is that, but um, I think that on PyPy there can be some Python, uh, some package for this. Uh, actually, on PyPy there is several thousands, a lot of thousands um, of packages, and it's impossible to just browse all, the, all of them. But yeah, uh, the rest is also pretty famous uh, format, and I hope that. There would be something for that. Sure. Uh, yes. How, how did you find all these packages? And packages? <coughs> so, uh, how did you find all these packages? Yeah. Uh, actually, and, uh, I tried that. <laughs> uh, it's spent. I spent a lot of time by by that. Uh, actually, a lot of packages I found on Twitter of the PyPy. And also, I do recommend to you PyOM, PyOMTW, which stands for uh, Python Module of the Week, I think. Um, there is a lot of examples, uh, documented examples, uh, for also uh, for built-ins, especially. And, also, and yeah, there are several other resources that I, I've used. But there is not not um, all of them. So. Do you have any other uh, When you mentioned by you, uh, do you also know you can download a command which is able to download also videos from uh, email and uh, I'm sure that uh, there exist other tools that does the same. Uh, I'd like to show just one example in Python that I've noticed. Good note. I didn't know that. Thank you. If there wouldn't be any other questions, Thank you again for your attention and enjoy your DevConf. Written into Python 3, uh, but the most tools that I've, I've met is still from Python 2.7. Uh, yes. Yeah?
asi jenom tu VG pro dušku. My si tady dáme, my máme totiž tu divadelní hru. Tady jste šim čer. Ne, 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 tady jste šim čer. V pohodě. Ok, cool. I just, I just leave, this, this is our props. So, I will need how you Yes, like you will get 